Hi, my name is Stuart Lynch, and this is the fifth of nine videos in the Building a Wordle App clone series. In this video, we'll be adding the logic to the Wordle game, where we check for letter matches. We'll create another playground page to avoid the overhead of working in a full project. And we'll replicate some key model properties from our models and data model so that we can develop and test the logic of the game. Once we're satisfied with uh, how we're doing, we can copy the code back directly and reuse it in our application. If you like this series, please leave a comment below and give the video a thumbs up. Be sure you subscribe to my channel and make sure you ring the bell to get notified of new videos. And if you want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee. As we do at the start of every video, make sure you start a new branch. We'll branch from lesson four and call this new branch Lesson 5, and make sure that it's checked out as the current branch. When we enter our word, the first thing that we'll want to do is to check to see if we actually have a match. If so, then we can print out that we've won, and I want to specify that the game is over. So first, I'll create a new variable called GameOver, and initially set it to False. Now we can update our enter word function by first making that check. And if successful, we can change game over to true and print you win. Else, we can start checking that the word is verified. We do want to set the background colors though. So let's create a stub function for that called set current guess colors and then we can call that function when we win and set in play to false now within that verify word if clause when we have verified that it's a valid word we want to do a few things we want to call that function to set the colors again We'll increment that try index by one so that we can move on to the next row. And then we'll check to see if the try index is six. And if it is, the game is over. So we'll set game over to true and in play to false as well. And then print out you lose. I like to test things out in a playground first whenever I'm trying some new logic. And what I want to do is to create a known word for my selected word and then test it against some guesses to see if I can come up with a way of determining what color I want to set the black ground of my letter. So I'm going to create a new page in our playground and I'll call that new page word check. I'm going to call my original page word generation and I'll place it above my new one. Now the problem is that my code is in a view and I'm using Swift UI with a color view with custom extended properties. And I don't want to set up a Swift UI view in my playground. And the workaround I'm going to do is to create an enum called color that will override the Swift UI color view. And I can use an associated value of a string. And I'm going to contain cases representing my actual background colors. And those colors are correct, misplaced, and wrong. And then I can create a computed property called prefix that will generate a letter that is the first letter of the case's raw value, but capitalized. Next, I'm going to go back to my project and copy and paste my guest struct from my project into my playground. There isn't a color called system background, and I realized that I made a mistake back in my project, so I'm going to set the background to wrong for all of my letters initially. And finally, I'm going to create within the guest struct another computer property that will represent a string that maps all of my prefixes from the BG colors array into a single string so that I can see what my matches are. So my match letters are just my BG colors enum 
mapping the prefix joined by an empty string. So let's simulate our first guess then. So first I'll create a selected word property that will represent our randomly generated one. And I'll enter Baker, all in capitals. Next, I'll need to replicate the try index, and I'll just assume it's my first guess, so I'll set it equal to zero. We'll also need an array of guesses, so I can copy that from our populate defaults by first creating an empty array of guesses, and then populating it by appending five guesses, each with a different index. Now we can specify our guest to compare against by specifying a word for our guess at our try index, which we know is zero. So let's enter the word abhor. So what I want to do is to write a function that will compare the letters and produce an M if the letters are correct but misplaced, a W if they're not in that word at all, so wrong, or a C if the letter is correct and in the right place. This means that the match letter string for my two words will be MMWWC, because A and B are in the word, but misplaced. H and O are not there, so Ws. And R is correct and in the right place, so a C at the end. For this then, I will create a function and I'm going to call it set current guess colors which is the same name as the function that we called back in our data model. So first I'm going to create an array of letters from our selected word so that I'll know the order. And I can do that simply by mapping the characters as strings, creating an array that I'm going to call correct letters. And then I can run a loop through each letter and compare the correct letter with the corresponding letter in our guess. So to make it easier to read and type out the code, let me create two constants for those letters. So let correct letters will be our correct letters at that index, and guess letter will be our guesses at the try index dot guess letters at the index. Now, if they're the same, if guess letter equals equals correct letter, then the guesses at the try index background colors index are going to be correct. So we'll set the case to be dot correct, the enum case. Let's do a similar thing to check if they are correct but misplaced. We can reuse our guess letter from the previous loop. So I'll copy it from above, and then we'll first check to see if the correct letters array contains that letter. But we also need, via AND, the background colors at the current guess is not already set to correct. So we can't override a correct letter with a misplaced letter. If this is the case then, our background color for that guess at the try index, that background color must be the misplaced background color. Finally then, if they're not correct and they're not misplaced, they must be wrong. Now since we've only checked to see if they've been correct or misplaced, then if we had set the original background colors to all be wrong, we don't need to do anything here because they're already marked as wrong. So let's print out three things to the console. We'll print out the selected word. We'll print out our guess word at the try index. And then we'll print out our guesses try index match letters. Those are the letters that we've just tried to figure out. Baker versus Abhor. Oops, something's not right here. I'm getting two of my letters from the raw value of my color enum. Let me go back up there. Yeah, I don't know how I did that. 
I used a prefix of two and it should be one. So let me run one more time now. And our function gives us what we expect. But not so fast. Change the selected word to bonds and the guess word to books. And run once more. This time we see that we get an incorrect matching. B and O match up fine, but the second O in books is not misplaced. We've already used that letter O, so it should be a W. Well, K is wrong and S being correct are OK. So we can fix this by first finding the frequency of each letter in our correct word and then decrement that frequency when we use a letter up. Now, to create a frequency for a letter, we can just create an empty dictionary of string for the type and int for the value. And next, I can populate that dictionary by stepping through each letter in the correct letters array and then increment the frequency to that letter by first setting the default to zero. So it starts at zero always and then increments on the first match. If it finds a match again, it'll increment again. So it's a really quick way of finding a frequency of an array. Now in our first loop, if the letters are correctly matched, we'll reduce that frequency of the letter. And since the correct letter and guess letter are the same, we can use either one to find that value in the dictionary and decrement it. And since we know that it must exist, we can force unwrap. In the misplaced check, we'll need to make sure that the frequency of that guess letter is still greater than zero. In the misplaced check, we'll need to make sure that the frequency of that guess letter is greater than zero in our correct letters array before we can set it to being misplaced. And if it is, we can set the color and reduce the frequency again. Run this now, and you'll see that we get the correct result, CCWWC. Perfect. We can now move this code over to our project because we've used the same names for our properties. Let's copy the body of this function, except for that computed match letters property that I created for the playground then, and return, and we'll be able to paste it into our data model because now color is a color view, not an enum, and it should just work. But before we do that pasting, let's remember to set the default value for our background first to wrong. Now within that data model, I can paste that code into the body here. If we build, we get no errors. Let's commit this lesson to our repository because our next step is to figure out how to flip the cards over to display the background color for our letter and also to change the color of any keys to match the correct, misplaced, or wrong match colors. This is going to take a bit of work, so it's best to do that with a clear mind in a new video.